everyone. We are live at an event called The Mix. It is an acronym that stands for the Media Indie Exchange. And yes, it is part of the Game Developers Conference, which is going on all week here in San Francisco. As you can see, it is crowded. And as you can hear, it is loud. And we are about to go get a first look at some of the video games coming out of independent studios that are on display here, in some cases, for the very first time. So I'm going to pop out in front of the camera here. Here, let's zoom it out so we can get a better look here. We are at an event space just a little ways away from the Moscone Center, which the Game Developers Conference has completely taken over. Hello, by the way. And I can see your chats and your comments on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, so please feel free to comment. Tell me what you want to see more of. Tell me what you think of the game we're looking at. This is an interactive live experience. And we're going to just comb through about uh, three huge rooms uh, full of video games and their developers. Some of them are from all over the world. They're from Scandinavia. They're from Poland. They're from Asia. They're from South America. There are people representing all the continents and all of the countries here. And we're going to meet some of them and have a look at their games. But please, don't, don't hesitate to comment and tell me something that you want to see or something you want to see a little bit more of. Now, here's how it works. You see, I'm wearing the sticker that says press. There are three kinds of people at this event. I mean, there are lots of kinds of people, but there are three categories. They are press, they are industry, and they are developers. Those that just say dev on them. And the developers are here showing off their games. They may be here hoping to network with other developers or people in the industry, or they may be here hoping to get press for their games from people like me, which says press. And a lot of them even have their press folks here uh, ready to talk about their games and give that elevator pitch to tell us what the game is all about. So what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to stop talking and we're going to start walking and we're going to go look at some of the games that are on display here, see kind of what the what the big trends are and what the hot uh, types of games are that are going on here at this year's GDC 2024, which is going on all week in San Francisco. This is the first night, and believe me, people are already going to be exhausted by tomorrow. So I'm going to step out of the way. We're going to take the camera off the tripod. Please, once again, don't hesitate to uh, tell me what you want to see more of in the chat. And uh, we're going to go for a little walk here. So we're at the Terra Gallery space. Uh, you might be familiar with that event space. Uh, not a whole lot of parking here. Big line outside. A lot of people were getting dropped off by Ubers and Lyfts as we walked up. It's kind of a dark, moody space. We've got the game turned up way high on the camera. And uh, as you can see... 8 o'clock was when the, the, the general attendees were allowed in. We got a media preview from 7 to 8. And uh, we're just going to kind of start over in the corner here and, uh, and, and work our way around. We've got a squirrel with a gun here. I'm not sure how squirrels are as marksmen, but we're about to find out. I see a squirrel. Is he armed? Is the squirrel armed? Not yet. That is a very fast squirrel. Okay. You've got, you've got armed squirrels, and what do we have over here? We have wild, wild bastards. Is this your game? Yes. What uh, is this game? It's Wild Bastards, so it's the spiritual successor to Void Bastards. It's going to be coming to console and PC later this year. Uh, so it's a strategy shooter FPS, uh, as you saw right there in the comment. This is one of your showdowns, Space Western, so like this is your little like high noon combat you're going through. Space Western, all right. Yeah. Wait, yeah there, there was a Space Western made in the year I was born. <laughs> yeah, which one? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, the OG Space Western. It's a tried and true and beloved genre, is it not? Yes. And so, and so, what, what is the uh, what, what is the thing you're most proud of about this game? Uh, most proud? I mean, just it just continues on the success of Void Bastards, but like enhances it. So there's more aspects to it, more gameplay, bigger levels. Um, so there's a lot for people to do. There's a relationship mechanic that's been added. So like, as any game not all going to get along, so if they're not going to get along, they're not going to fight together, so you have to manage that as well. Wow, all right, so we have to keep everybody getting along. Exactly. As, probably just as hard in the game as it is in real life. Especially if you're outlaws. <laughs> That's true. Outlaws are not known for getting along. All right, there we are. A first-person shooter, Wild Bastards, here at The Mix at the Game Developers Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maximum Entertainment, rated M for Maximum there. Of course, that is the game studio, but it is a play on the rating system. And uh, 
here. And this is just one little corner of this sprawling event space here. Come to these events long enough, and you'll see games in just about every genre, and, and games where you just kind of wonder, like, who came up with this idea? So, kohlrabi, that, that's a vegetable, by the way, kohlrabi starship. Looks like somebody's walking through a sandstorm here. <laughs> is this your game? Uh, it's my game, yeah. It's your game, awesome. So uh, what is Kohlrabi Starship, and how did you come up with that idea and that name? So Kohlrabi Starship is a farming game with space travel. It's basically about finding ecosystems, finding love, and exploring the galaxy. Um, and how did you come up with the idea for it? I basically just wanted to have everything that I was missing in a game in one game. Everything you were missing in a game in one game? Yeah. So what is one of the things that, that you absolutely had to have in this game? I wanted to breed pets for any kind of fur color that I want. So if I ever want a green pet with pink paws, I can do that now. Nice. And and uh, and where where are, where are you here from? I'm from Cincinnati. You're from Cincinnati. Yes. And so what what is it like coming to the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco and being around all these other game developers? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? What is it like coming here and being around all these other game developers? Awesome. And, and is, are you showing off this game for the first time? Yes, exactly. What, what, kind of, what kind of feedback are you hoping to get and what kind of feedback have you gotten so far? Um, I got really positive feedback. Like People like the art style and the music, so that's really good to hear. Um, I'm here mostly to find a publisher, so I hope I can yeah, make a good impression there. I hope you can find a publisher too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kohlrabi Starship. We'll take another glimpse at it here. Say hi to Todd Nance, who is watching the live stream. Hi, Todd. Thanks for tuning in. People have been giving good feedback on the art and on the music. We can't hear the music, but we can see the art. Thank you so much. One more look at the name there. Kohlrabi Starship here at the Mix event here at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. Now over here, I believe I saw some action RPGs, three of them from the same publisher. And they were eager to talk to us. So let's see what we have going on here. We have Robots at Midnight. Is this your game? Yeah. Can you tell me what the game is about? It's an action RPG where you fight corrupt, evil robots and save the world. So not too different from reality? Definitely not. The future is robots. And will we need to have, it looks like a, he's carrying an axe there to fight the robots? Uh, you fight different, you collect different weapons, each have their own different abilities, and uh, yeah. What, what are kind of the best weapons to use against evil robots? One of my favorites is the propeller sword, but you got to finish the quest first. The propeller sword? The propeller sword. Is that like, like a sword that spins like a propeller? Uh, no, it's broken off from a plane, and it's a propeller sword. Oh, it's that's sword. amazing. And, and what, what does it take to get that sword? you got to finish the quest in, in the demo, yeah, to get the sword. Okay, so this quest right here will earn you the propeller sword. Uh, killing the Lugi baseball boss. The, the, the baseball what? Boss. Baseball boss. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's just in time for baseball season, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh, <laughs> wow, we tuned in at just the right time. Our player here did not complete that quest, but he's going to try again.
Get a sword from a vending machine. I wish I could get a sword from a vending machine. Not sure what I'd use it for, but maybe when the evil robots showed up, it would come in handy. Let's see what we have going on here. Pharaoh, the Sundered Tribes. Is this your game? Yes, it is. Awesome. Can you tell me about it? It's uh, Monster Hunter meets Colony Sim. So give you a reason why you have to hunt these monsters to feed your family, feed your tribe. Right? So you can build your own village, you, you care for them, and you're a leader. So. And so, and so how, do, how does one beat the monsters? Sorry? How does one beat the monsters in this game? Uh, with your weapons. So you, in aerial combat. So we have a, a unique take on monster hunting. It's not about ground, it's about taking to the air, because, of course, when you're fighting these gigantic monsters, the only safe area is in the air. Oh, okay. So, so show, show, show me how this works then. How do you how do you fight from the air? I play old school inverted. Oh, okay. All right. I scroll I scroll my computer old school inverted, so I get it. I get it. So we have grappling hook and wings. Oh, look at that. And I'm assuming you're going to take off and fly here. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that. Sky whales. That's pretty cool. Oh, and now you can ride? Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Starting equipment. Uh, you have to kind of upgrade it, but oh, there's one. I got one. It's now, when you're building this game, do you have dreams about flying like the characters in the game? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you, you could almost say it's based on dreams that a lot of us have, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that where these ideas come from? Yeah, well, I mean, we're big fans of all the, all the really awesome things. Like, when we're designing this game, we thought, what's the best way to take down these big monsters? And, Inspired a lot by Attack on Titan, actually. They, they have to take to the air. There's no safe place on the ground. Nice. Now, have we, have we found one of the monsters yet? All right. Oh boy, that's a that's a big blast right there. And now you're lying you're lying in the in the grass. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, okay. That that thing looks mean. That thing looks really mean. So we've got this theme here of like of like giant robots are taking over the world here. Yeah. Is this oh, game mirroring reality? Oh, you died. I can't interview and play it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will take I will take blame for that. You've been more than generous with your time, and I really appreciate it. Tell me the name of the game again. Uh, Pharaoh the Sunder Tribes. Pharaoh the Sunder Tribes. Thank you so much. And if you're just joining us, we are here at the Mix. I'll show you the sign. I'll show you the logo. The logo's got a uh, video game controller in it right there. The Mix is the Media Indie Exchange. It is an event off-site here at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco where indie game developers introduce their games to people from the industry and people from the press. You've got this, you've got this game going on right here. Is this your game? Yeah, it's my game. And you're wearing your dev badge upside down. <laughs> you decided oh. you wanted to be different. Yes, I am a bed or something. Whatever bed. You're a yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also late at night, but it's also good. We come to Scandinavia. We come straight from a blizzard. We are in the game Fruit Pass, which is a narrative cooking game with dual wielding knives and fruits. All right, Fruit Bus. 
And and now, what does that what does that wrench have to what does that wrench have to do with the game? What's going on with that wrench there? Well, this, the game's pretty much up to be uh, creative and uh, and um, what is the word? Sorry, English in my second language. Uh, it's all about being uh, creative uh, within the constraints of doing kind of whatever you want. So you can, of course, pimp, pimp out your truck. You can uh, you can use the wrench to build things around it. You can uh, create chairs. You can make uh, decorations for it. So the wrench is for that specifically, and hammer. For, for your knife, for your blender, for your cooker, for your oven. You can make croutons. You can make fruit cocktails. You can even make, like, gasoline fruit sandwich, you know? Like, it's... It's a, it's a creative cooking game about fruit, and it's an inspiration game in the same sense. Now, now, what you just described, I'm not sure that would taste very good. I mean, the system allows for everything to try. However, everyone else in the world has their opinion, so maybe someone would like that, but most would probably not leave you a tip, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, let's have a look here. Okay, this is, we've got Scrapyard Guy. Install the rest of the wheels while I find some petrol. <laughs> Petrol, what we call gasoline. Sweets over here, and if you're like right click on the wheels, you have the wrench to get a bit off the back, right? Right. This part of the road comes from the same thing as well. And we're just going to just build up your van from the beginning. And the van is pretty much about the freedom of the expression of travel. And you had it from your grandmother, who fucked you and raised this little kid. There we go. Yes. Grab that. Good job, says the scrapyard guy. Take this jerry can and fill up your fruit bus. Is that a raccoon? Yep. So the gas guy is a raccoon. Guy. He was about to impound your grandma's car. Oh! And I was like, yeah, you can have it, I guess. <laughs> so, this is about the tangibility of things. Like, everything is a physical thing. There is actually gas in the tank. Mm -hmm. It's empty. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, now you can get in the seat, sit in the car, put on the handbrake, and then get a get out of the car. So, if you sit down there, you can click on the chair. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now you can drive. Oh. First off, you need to drop the tool. Uh, LT you can't like drive this? with a gas can in your hand. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, oh. Right, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't let that spill. Glove, 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 glove. Uh, all right. So now you can sit down again. So now it's here it goes. Yeah, there you go. And then the brake is on. And, uh, yeah, you're good. Here you go. The door is open. You're free. Uh, uh, now you're in reverse. Uh, and that, the game is actually way more colorful than this. This is part of, this is part of like the sad part of it. Oh, real? Oh, okay. Because you find this this abandoned vehicle, but then yeah, you yeah. fix it up and it gets all colorful. Yeah, of course. Because you know, uh, coming from Norway, we uh, we are this is all our life. So we we want to showcase like this is the most fun. Uh, you go into tropical islands. You go into mysterious fjords in Scotland. Uh, so you really use color to create mood. Oh yeah. I mean, color is such an important uh, thing about fruit and cooking as well, you know? If you cut up a watermelon, you want that fairly uh, amazing red with the, with the black little seeds, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get that anywhere else but, but strong colorization. And for me, I do an audio sign, an audio sign with it, so we need to make sure if you're cutting up a watermelon, it's going to sound scrumptious. You're going to keep on wanting to make more food. So the rest of the game will be far more scrumptious than these opening scenes. Oh, yeah. If you go and yeah. talk to the captain up there, if you go talk to the captain, that guy, you can see like the color color change. It's like foggy right there. now. This reminds me of San Francisco. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, we don't. <laughs> now, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Bananas. Bananas. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, and suddenly it's, it's colorful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. That's great, man. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. We're, we're, we're just, we're live streaming. We're showing a little bit of everything. Oh, so, okay. right now, yeah, right so Fruit Bus. Uh, thank you so much for uh, show, showing me the game. And, and, where, and where are you visiting here from? We're visiting from Norway. Uh, we're a small team developing uh, indie games from Norway. We, we worked on like four very sad games like Among the Sleep and Mosaic. Now we're making a fun game and it's, uh, it's been a very cool experience. Very cool. So from sad games to fun games. And, yes. and what is it like to come here to San Francisco from Norway? It's always been really fun. We have a history of being here ever since we came here the first time, like about 12 years ago with the first game. 
So we tend to come here every time we can have a game to show. We love the response here, we love the people here, and it's all it's all a really nice thing. Something like the mix we've been at before as well. We, we love this event. So yeah, we're very happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. You guys have a great show. All right, have a good day. If you're just joining us, we are here at The Mix, the Media Indie Exchange, which is an opportunity for independent game developers to show off their latest creations to members of the media and members of the industry. Some are looking for press, some are looking for publishers, some are looking for players who will give them feedback on their games. And there are so many games here, we'll never be able to get to all of them, but there was something I saw over here that was kind of interesting. It's a, uh, it's a retro looking game that has like an NTSC scan line effect. And that's a thing that's been becoming more popular in the past couple of years. K3 Dev says, thanks for streaming. You're welcome, K3 Dev. And Todd was asking about AI. I definitely want to get to some folks we can ask about AI. We'll definitely make it a point to ask that. This is called Animal Well. Now, whose game is this? All right. Now that you mention it, yeah. And she's, yeah. Is this your game? It is. It's our game. Mostly. It's y'all's yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm just doing a little live stream. I'm walking around here, and I just wanted to ask you guys. I noticed you guys kind of had that retro scan line effect going on, and, and I wanted to ask you all about that. Okay, yeah, go for it. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously one of the themes of this year's show is, is looking back at game history and game preservation, and yeah. I was talking to my boss today about retro games and what a big trend that is. What made you want to do the, the scan line effect and kind of do the 8-bit style graphics like what I grew up with? Um, yeah, so I, in my mind, that's just like how I think of pixel art looking. Uh, a lot of the old pixel art, you know, it was designed to be viewed on the CRT TVs at the time, so they took advantage of that for, like, um, color blending and gradients and be able to do transparency. And there was a lot of subtlety to, like, creating the art and, um, you know, it was authored viewing a CRT screen and then it was played viewing on a CRT screen. So, like, um, when I see pixel art nowadays with, like, the sharp pixels, like... Um, I guess it just it feels like a different thing. So I wanted to, uh, I think, you know, kind of create a CRT scanline effect that kind of gave a more interesting lens to like look at the the, the a, pixels through. It's a good point, right? Because like when we see like so-called retro games now, pixel didn't have sharp edges when we were growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. So it's like. Um, I think it's just a, it, it adds a more interesting texture and uh, um, just like I think it's just like a, I think a richer way to 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 display pixels. So, um, Do you think future generations will also enjoy it like that? The way we look back at old French impressionist paintings and, and we still like the way they were done. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think there's like a timelessness to it that's not just nostalgic. I think. Uh, yeah, I think. In the same way, like, you can look at, like, halftone, like, dot printing for, like, um, printed art, like, or, like, old comic books, like, I think that's interesting to look at, too, even though, like, I, you know, don't have, like, nostalgic for it, but it's just, like, yeah, pointillism, just, like, different ways that, um, that kind of leverage the way your eye kind of abstracts away information and kind of, uh, can blur this stuff together, I think, it's just, like, it's a fun thing to play with. Very cool. Now, now what, what is this game, and why did you decide to make it in the pixel art uh, uh, genre, I guess? Um, yeah, so this is Animal Well. It's um, We just announced the release date for it. It's about to come out. Um, but I've been working on it for about almost seven years now. Um, and early on, I just I thought pixel art uh, would be... It was meant to be almost like a scope limitation, because I'm working on it by myself. So it was a way to... I think ensure that I would be able to get it done. It still took like seven years to make, so um, I guess it goes to show that you can still make a really long and involved. Because sometimes game. limitations help you focus your work. Yes, it, it, it helped to find. It helped me find a unique art style because I still ended up wanting to explore a lot of uh, modern graphics effects, but having to adapt them into pixel art um, sort of pushed the game in a unique direction by defining those limitations early on. Um, yeah, and I just think it's like, it's kind of an, a style that's native to video games, where like, by picking it, 
I'm actually able to like do a lot more with like the horsepower of the, the computer. Um, like I just it's less rendering work. I don't have to do a lot of games that go for higher resolution have to do like anti-aliasing and all these things to hide the fact that there's pixels. So it's just like um, pixels are inherently a part of uh, the process. So I'm just trying to embrace them and show them off and um, not not have the game pretend like it's something it's not. not. Awesome. In a sentence, tell me what the game is about. So the game, um, you start off, you, you uh, hatch from the this flower and you find yourself as this uh, kind of circle ball character and the game doesn't explain anything to you and um, you're just meant to kind of explore uh, and look around and there's all these like hidden passages everywhere and you find it's like a very lush subterranean atmospheric environment um, the game's called Animal Well so you encounter a lot of different like animals in the environment but you don't know if they're like friendly or if they uh, might be hostile towards you so there's some kind of scary bits and um, but it, it's just meant to keep surprising you like the whole way through. But one of our viewers said seven years is a long time to create. Did the game change over the years? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been like evolving very organically over that time. Um, I, I kind of think of it as like a painting that you keep like painting over um, as like I feel like I've made like three games during this time, and I I feel like the first two like I didn't I just didn't ship them, and I just the game just kept kind of growing. Um, so yeah, um, it's 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 just yeah evolved very organically. Very cool. I'm gonna take a look at some of your game art here and watch the game in action. This is Animal Well. No pressure or anything. Don't mess up. There we go. The little, there's a the little ball-like character. Yeah, the little floppy disk icon. Love it. Explore and figure out how to play the game as you explore it. And, uh, and we've seen that's a thing that has evolved in games over time. And of course, what's what's old is new again. And now we're seeing games that that make you explore to figure out how to play. Walk back to that first room we started in again. 
once again, if you're just joining us, we're at an event that is an off-site event on the very first evening of the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco. The event is called The Mix. It is where indie game developers show off their latest creations to members of the media and people from the industry. People might be looking for press, they might be looking for publishers, they might just be looking for players to play test their games. Of course, it sounds like there is more music playing up here. You know what? We're just going to roll with it. But you can see a lot of people chilling out, chilling out up here because they've been attending conference sessions all day. They need to let loose. It is definitely a party atmosphere because you know what? Playing games should be fun. Lest we forget, this is a conference about entertainment. So too, from, from your lips to Mark Zuckerberg's ears. We've got a game called Cylinder here. This must be your game since you're wearing the t-shirt. Yes. What is this game? So Cylinder, uh, it's actually a new version of an old puzzle game, but we've added a lot to it. So it has a uh, has multiplayer, like competitive multiplayer, party multiplayer, uh, survival. It also has a uh, normal endless single player, and you can even make your own puzzles, like single screen logic puzzles. Upload them to Steam. We have all that. It's, it has, it's like my uh, my boss hates it, but it's like the Swiss Army knife, the Desert Island puzzle game. So it really has everything. Really so it's try a puzzle game that's so much more than a puzzle it game. It is. It is. Because, you know, uh, these higher-end puzzle games just don't come out anymore. And so we're, we're trying to do that, you know, uh, not trying to replace Tetris or anything like that, but trying to have the same meat, the same longevity, you know. Uh, so far, uh, everybody, people really like it. Uh, we know this game is going to be very special to a lot of people. Everybody likes puzzle games. So this is the, this is the, next, this is the next big thing in puzzle games. What is it about a game like Tetris that is so universally appealing that you're trying to capture in your game? So, in my opinion, I think what, I think honestly what makes before Tetris became so ubiquitous, I think I think it's just like uh, it just makes sense somehow that uh, you know you have these pieces, you have these gaps, you fill them in. You know what I mean? And with our games, it's like you see the different colors, you understand, you try to put them together. And I think there's just something about that logic. And so you know, like I said, we've a uh, we're trying to take that idea, and you can do it fast and crazy and chaotic, or you can just do it, you know, we have slower paced thinking modes, and so it's both logic and quick reaction, you know, and I think Tetris, that's what Tetris has. Does, does it just tap into this pattern matching center in your brain that is just itching to be stimulated? Yes, yeah, and I, I think that speaks to most everybody, you know, at least to a degree, at least to a degree. There's something inherently satisfying about solving a puzzle. Absolutely, but like I said, you know, whether it's pattern recognition, or like I said, just spatially filling in gaps, that's, that's what I think is the appeal. All right, let's have a look at what cylinders looks like here. All right, we've yeah. got, we got so, one so, cylinder, okay. Yeah, so he is playing the, uh, the puzzle, he's playing the endless single player mode. And then uh, we, we also, we, we've been doing more multiplayer tonight, but he was so good at multiplayer, we're just like, let's oh, try something else. <laughs> <laughs> too, too so too so you, you have found your elite level player. No, so, yeah, we were, we were genuinely surprised. You know, we, even, we have, you can see my Steve, we have hundreds, hundreds of hours developing this. 
you know what I mean? And then he came in and just like, he actually beat us like fair and square, but we weren't just like holding back for him. Oh, wow. Wild, yeah. Too, too far, too far. So when <laughs> most people come up, you, you say, hey, you're a new player. We're going to play against you head-to-head. But, but this yeah, guy was too good. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, uh, yeah, we'll let him do his thing, but, uh, but uh, it will be cool for you to check out and get some footage of him. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna make sure I get a, get a shot of this. <laughs> okay. you, you're, you're gonna be the first esports athlete in Cylinder, right? So to speak, yeah, sure. <laughs> let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, we'll sign it. We'll sign it. Nice. They'll be sponsored, sponsored by exactly, the developer. Exactly. That's amazing. Too fine, too fine. Let's, let's take a look at the technique. Hold, holding the controller down low, keeping it close to the body. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty basic trick for the control, you know what I mean? But, right. But there's so much depth in the actual. So okay, I, I have to ask you a question because one of my viewers made me promise I would I would ask somebody this question. Do you use AI in the development of your games? Okay, so so it's really funny. We don't use like ChatGPT or anything like that, but we we're considering doing a funny uh, clickbait dev blog about how like we tuned the AI in the game. You know what I mean? And we actually have a we actually have what we call Turnbot. Uh, our lead engineer actually made. A, a little thing that it will solve the single screen puzzles for you. And so we would like to do a clickbait article that's like AI and cylinder, but it's not that. But it's not that. Really? But, but are you saying that you're using an, an AI tool to, to play test your game? No, uh, like uh, instead of play test, it's more just like a um, it's more of a uh, it is a tool uh, because we have we have hundreds of puzzles that and we forget the solutions. And oh. so this is an easy way, uh, easy way for us to just, like keep track of the solutions, solve the puzzles quickly. The other thing it does, which is really cool, is that when it solves it, it takes a picture of it. And so that way, that also helps us in a lot of different ways. Oh, nice. I mean, I mean, AI is a big topic, especially this year compared to last year, right? Yeah, yeah. And for what it's worth, I think it's interesting that, like, you know. Uh, the bigger games that are actually using AI for like dialogue, things like that, there's a lot of people say like, well, maybe there should be a designation or a warning that this game uses that. I think that's very interesting, just for what it's worth, just for what it's worth. You know, uh, we were talking to somebody about it the other day, and they made an interesting analogy that's like, you know, in the music world, maybe AI could be used to just like make a song, make a track before the actual singer sings it. And so maybe AI could be used for pre-production, but again, if it's going to be used in final production, maybe it should have some designation that it was used. Interesting thought. Interesting yeah. thought. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. The yeah, game we'll, is Cylinder. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll jump to the market by the get some Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll get some shots of Cylinder being played yeah, in multiplayer yeah. mode. We'll, we'll get the, uh, we'll get the Here at The Mix. Media Indie Exchange event here at the Game Developers Conference. Look at all those different modes. Look at all those different modes. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Survival, which is, well, unfortunately, we made survival too hard for this build. Oh, boy. But uh, we'll, we'll give them deck braces. That's the crazy. All right. So. All right, we've got two players going head to head. Two players and two bots. Two players and two bots. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we, have, we have the objectives down here. Oh, you can sabotage each other? Correct. That's amazing. Correct. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to have, we're trying to have everything. Yeah, we had, uh, we were playing that thing, had feedback, like, you know, everybody gets too focused on their own cylinder. Right. So, you know, how can we have it be that, like, not only can you attack and sabotage, but you know who did it. Oh, all right. And so you, you've got that trail of light. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and so, like, uh, all I do is I just try to see who's ahead and you can attack them. Boom. And then you know, all the characters have different abilities, like, you know, the rambles, they can make the make the tile stuff. So you're not just playing in parallel, you gotta keep an eye on each other. Correct. 
again, and like, uh, what we found is like, uh, if we keep the cylinder full, it does lend itself to more party, more mm -hmm. laid back, and we just kind of have a good time. But we do have it where it's like, like you saw earlier with the single player, we do have traditionally where the, where the tiles fall, mm -hmm. you actually have to watch out. And Got it. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's a rising sun, but it looks like a taco, and it's making me hungry. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yeah, the game welcome. is Cylinder. Here on the first night of the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco at The Mix. As you can see the event is very crowded. Lots of folks with cameras, lots of folks just here to play games and find out more about them. We have a game here called Sacre Bleu! Sacre Bleu! Sacre Bleu! Oh, would you like to play? What, what is this game all about? I see there's a fleur de lis in the corner, so we're sticking with the French theme. Well, Sacre Bleu is all about both and combat and uh, musketeer ballet. And how did you come up with this idea? I, uh, I lived in France for a while, mm -hmm. and it's all about Sacre Bleu! Like yes. You've got to pronounce it just like that. Just like that. And when you die, it says Sacre Bleu. It's one of the main features of that night. It's, it's one of the features. It's, <laughs> you might want to cut that. Do you think that people in, in, in France and French speaking countries will love this game? Well, it's a bit of a cultural appropriation, maybe. But it's. Yeah, of course they will. Of course. Why not? <laughs> I'm going to get a shot of your logo here, yeah. and then I want to get a shot of the game being played here. So how, how is the game played? How do you play this? Yeah. Want a demo over here? Oh, the Bastille. And the Bastille. Now, your character has a very finely groomed mustache. I, I appreciate that your character has such good style and grooming. No, I'm going to distract you and ask you because I'm very curious. When you build the game, are you the best at playing it, or are there people who are better at playing the game than the people who built it? There are no better players than me. But there will be a Steam leaderboard or Switch leaderboard for speedrunners. I mean, for people who would try to best me, but of course, I am the best player. <laughs> So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. The game is called Sacre Bleu. Ah, yes. You got a film? Film? All right. There's the QR code for Sacre Bleu. Which is now. I got it. Good. I know. You got Thank it. you very much. And I will take this card. Thank you so much. Who are you with? NBC Bay Area. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you so much. If you're just joining us, we're going to take an overhead look here at this incredibly crowded space. Here at the Terra Gallery event space, south of the Moscone Center. We're at an event called The Mix at the Game Developers Conference. It stands for the Media Indie Exchange. It is where indie game developers show off their latest work to the press and to the industry. 
and usually they're doing it with food and drink in hand. We've seen a lot of Stella Artois tonight, and we've seen a lot of games with a lot of very creative art. Some of the games inspired by real life, some of them inspired by dreams. How's it going? Good. How are I think you? I saw you guys last year. Yeah. I interviewed you last year. Yeah, yeah, I remember so, that. So you are a great example of somebody who has built a game and has brought it back for a second time. Yes. So we what, have. Have, what have you guys done in the last year based on some of the feedback that you got at this conference? So we the game was was really hard, so we made it harder. Uh, and we, we added a ton of weapons, uh, like loot, There's you can cook food now. So that will make the game a bit easier. If you know the recipes, but so, so we added levels of course, but you have to get the, to them. So what we're showing here is like an upgraded version of last year's first level. Yeah. Got it. And so is it kind of like NASA where like you have to like get the thing into space and then you have to get it to work and then you've got to, you know, they do they walk before they can run. Is that is that how building a game works? Yeah, building a game is more like you have the rocket and you pretend it's flying and everybody else is also accepting that it's flying, but it's not. <laughs> uh, and, and, and like, yeah. And then you, you make an illusion of it uh, and then you fake the whole space program. That's, that, that's the game. Uh, <laughs> What are some of the things that you heard last year that were the most valuable feedback that you got from, from your playtesting at, 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 during GDC last year? Uh, I think one of the most valuable things we, we got from, from last year is, uh, oh, that's a hard one. I'm not sure. Like, probably that people enjoy the game and that we should keep making it and that we quit our jobs <laughs> to do this full time. Um, so you had already quit your jobs by the time you were here last year, if I recall. Oh, I had it. You had? Oh, you I got actually a day had job. I, yeah, my, my, my comfort workers did, and we got funding. But like, we, we get we get so much like uh, positivity from this event. So so yeah, so we it's keep validation going. that what you're building is actually something people want to play. Yeah, I think that's that's probably the key thing. Yeah. And and so you made it harder. And and let's see, can we? Is there a? Can I see the graphics? Ah, there we go. Yeah, you got it on the laptop display there. Yeah, it's loading. Have you, is, is, there, is there more art? Is there more intricate art than there was? Yeah, we, we have more enemies. There's more food. You can cook Swedish pastry now. Very a important. A Swedish pastry? Yeah. Are there lingonberries involved? Uh, not yet. That's a good idea, though. Oh, okay, let's There's do lingonberries. Today it's just berries, and you can make jam. And if you put jam in a jar, you can make Swedish pancakes. So, I mean... We, we, we don't eat it with syrup. We eat it with... So, so next year when I see lingonberries, I'll know that I helped with that idea. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. <laughs> so the game is called Sulfur, and for those who weren't watching last year, tell me in a sentence, what's the game about? So it's a game, it's a first-person shooter, roguelite. And so it's like an extraction shooter mixed with a roguelike. So think of like Diablo was a mix with Counter-Strike, and they had a baby, and that baby grew up with too many adults. Well, cartoons so it's like uh, it's like cartoony dark and grim but like not not too too hardcore it's it's still cartoony and fun to play now okay now explain to our viewers what a roguelike game is because I, I'm fascinated by the fact that it's a whole genre defined by one game yeah so so exactly it's very interesting so roguelike is is a game where you uh, pretty much whatever the further you go the more you're risking, right? I mean, because you're collecting stuff, you're leveling up, but when you die, you have to do it all over again. So we're kind of making a rogue light. So in the sense, it's lighter in the, you can keep some of your stuff. There's a mechanic, extraction mechanic, where you can take stuff out of your run, put it in a permanent stash, and stash it uh, for the future. And then so, you don't lose it when you don't make it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you, you can decide whatever you're bringing with you will make you stronger, but you will risk it. You have to circle back to the hub world or extract them to, to save your stuff. Uh, so you're always on risk and there's like that friction. That it's, it's fascinating. There's this balance between save your stuff and save yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a, it, it's a classic genre that's been growing because it's a nice way to balance and design a game. Because you start from, from not, nothing and it kind of grows. So, so it's, a, it's a modern take of an old genre. Fantastic. I'm going to get a shot of your logo here. Yeah. And do you have a trailer playing or do you have a demo playing at all? Yeah, we have a trailer over here. Ah, all right. 
So that's the stuff right there. Yeah. I just so saw. That's the, that's the goblin custom. If oh you boy. Beat him, I give you a T-shirt. So uh, <laughs> we have, I've given away two this far. You've given away two T-shirts yeah. for beating that goblin. Yeah. That's the that's the burner phone. Oh so my gosh. That, oh, oh uh, now you've burned the, the burner use, phone. <laughs> yeah, the one you sign them to get your stash. Got to, it. Uh, to grab some stuff or or. Because yeah, once you've used the burner phone, you've got to get rid of it. Yeah, it's the one you side them. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. So, and you're, you're, you have to repair your, your gear, that's perfect condition, and yeah, you survive, and then keep going, and get stronger, and uh, risk your life all the way through. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. The yeah. game is named Sulfur, and your this name is? is Sulfur. My name is Anton. So, you can download the demo. If you go to trysulfur.com. Trysulfur.com. You got it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you're just joining us, we are here at The Mix, the Media Indie Exchange. Here's the, uh, here's the, the logo right there. It is an event at the, the first day, the first night, first evening of the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco. And again, with this overhead wide shot, you can see just how many people are here. It's a very crowded event. It's very loud. It's kind of warm in here. People are combating that warmth with uh, bottles of Stella Artois, as you can see right there. So I swear Stella did not sponsor this video, but everywhere I turn, somebody is drinking a Stella. We're on the second floor of the Terra Gallery, just at the foot of the Bay Bridge here in downtown San Francisco. We are, in fact, uh, we're starting to run out of battery here. Uh, so I don't think we can necessarily keep going forever because we are, in fact, starting to run out of battery. But I'm glad that it looks like at least a few people are watching. And if there's more that you want to see or more that you want to know, uh, please holler at me and let me know because I'll be happy to show it to you until the battery dies. Uh, we've got Project Tower here. Ooh, that looks like a Vegas hotel demolition right there. What is, the, what is this game all about? It's uh, a sci-fi TPS. Uh, you play a, a prisoner in the Alien Tower, and you have to reach the top to hope to get back your freedom. And uh, the main mechanic of the, of the game is the morphing ability. And uh, there is a lot of uh, bullet hell, like, like in uh, Returnal. And uh, there is also a, a scenario uh, inspired by uh, Star Wars or uh, movie, movie like uh, sci-fi. I love it. Inspired by Star Wars. <laughs> There's that guy shooting. Uh -huh. Wow, four people. It is crazy to me that four people can build such high fidelity games. You know, I mean... Is it is the, is that just does that just speak to not only your talent but also the the, the, the tools that you have available to you? Yeah. You revive uh, and first of all, a lot because uh, we are only four people, so we have to use uh, all the tools. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, have you been able to, to make use of AI tools in developing this game, or no AI, not yet? Uh, normally, we, we will finish it with uh, mm -hmm. because we want to release it in uh, September. Mm -hmm. so now we have to finish it for release it. Mm -hmm. Project Tower. And where, and where did the idea for this game come from? Uh, uh, five years ago, we we are uh, we were in uh, mobile games, and now it's it's our uh, first big games. So uh, we started uh, three years ago, and uh, that's it. Uh, we we work hard for uh, do the, the best game as possible. And uh, hope uh, people like will uh, like it. Awesome. Project Tower, a four-person team based in Paris, built this game. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great show. We are here at the Mix, the after-hours event.
here on the opening evening of Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco, GDC 2024. Of course, we need to show the buffet here, the, the heavy hors d'oeuvres, I guess you could call them. We're looking a little bit picked over at this point. We've got some little pastries. We've got a, a charcuterie spread that's been absolutely laid waste to. This cheese looks like it's in slightly better shape. We've got a, uh, a bowl of mixed nuts here. And we've got a, a whole room full of mixed nuts. Pardon the joke. And we've got a room full of incredibly talented designers, engineers, story writers, character developing uh, 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 people. It's, it's really uh, incredible how much talent there is at this conference. Uh, not even just in this room, but, but the, the nearly 30,000 people who attend this conference every year here in San Francisco. You've got a very cute blue character here. He's got very big hands, this, this little, little blue guy. Southfield is the name of this game. Is this your game? Yeah, man. So tell me what it's all about. So it's a physics farming game. Uh, it's kind of like Gang Meets Me Stardew Valley. Uh, that's, that's, it's kind of like where we start the game. It gets a bit more hectic. Everything you do on the island affects the this thing in the center called the monolith, and that changes the world around you. Yeah. How'd you come up with the idea? The team came up with it. It wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. We were like, we want to make a physics game, and we want to make something interesting and good. And, and what makes a game a physics game? Um, well, what makes this a physics game is all the interactions are physics based. So everything is like silly, ragdoll related, throwing objects are all like actual physical things in the world. You put something on a conveyor belt, it doesn't just follow a path. It's can, it can bounce off it and go anywhere. There's a lot of momentum involved. Yeah, oh my god, so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There he is. There, who came up with the, the cute little blue guy? How'd you decide he was going to be shaped like that? Oh, uh, our artist, our character artist called Emily. What's that? Our character artist called Emily. Emily. And how did Emily uh, decide that this was going to be this blobular blue blue person? Or lots thing? And lots of iteration. I love it. So, oh, and and he's, he's got a little little plant sticking out of his head? And he's yeah, all, yeah, because you are a plant. You, oh, he's a plant. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That one doesn't have one of his lost days. Oh boy, uh oh. <laughs> there he is. Southfield is the name of the game. And where are you guys here from? Uh, uh, Middlesbrough, UK. UK, you came all the way here from the UK? Yep. And, and, and why was it important for you to be here? Uh, we just wanted to show everyone the game and be as many people as possible. What do you, what do you think so far of this and, conference and all the people here? Oh, uh, it's a lot. So I'm tired. I keep meeting people. <laughs> I would like to go to bed. <laughs> You'd like to go to bed? Yeah, I'm so tired. Did you just get in today? No, we've been here two days. But I'm very jet lagged. Jet lag is, is tough. It is yeah. really tough. It's been fun though. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Southfield all the way here from the UK and the cute little blue character here at The Mix at the Game Developers Conference an event where indie game developers show off their latest and greatest to a room full of reporters and industry people. We're getting awfully close to the one hour mark and in the process of getting close to the one hour mark, we're also getting close to the zero battery mark. So I'm gonna try to make it through this room here without getting my cord caught on uh, somebody's briefcase there. That's a great question. Uh, Todd asked about the number of developers at this show who are from outside the country. And I actually have that answer. It's not in front of me, but I, I got that answer in an interview on Sunday. And so I'm going to look into that uh, because there is actually a, an astounding number of people uh, at this conference who are from out of the country. And, and they're from an astounding number of countries. So uh, apologies for not having that answer for you, but I do have that answer. And I'm going to look into that. And we'll see if we can include that 
uh, in a story that we do uh, to wrap up all the highlights of this conference. So as you can see, we're now back here in the uh, in the main room, and I don't know where my tripod went. Uh, oh, there it is. It's it's over there in the corner, right, right exactly where I left it. <laughs> This is, uh, this is the, that, that first room that we started in. And I'm going to just go ahead and uh, put the camera right back up here on the tripod so I can and wish you all a good night. As you can see, there's, there's so much here, and there, there's way more than we even managed to get to. But uh, thanks for watching, and thanks for those of you who commented and, uh, and asked questions. That was really a fun part of this. Uh, the Game Developers Conference goes all week. It goes until Friday. Um, there are going to be uh, some of the, uh, the larger uh, game publishers are going to be exhibiting their games uh, tomorrow. Xbox is here tomorrow. Uh, the show floor doesn't actually open until Wednesday, and that's where a lot of the companies that make the game engines and, and the major development tools, uh, including motion capture tools, uh, that's where they're going to be uh, on the south side of the Moscone Center. So uh, we'll be there on, on Wednesday. Uh, we'll probably be live streaming on the NBC Bay Area channels, and of course we'll be uh, posting to all the, the social platforms and, and shooting material for a, a longer video a little bit down the road. So thank you guys so much for joining us, and uh, we will see you soon.